want to do today is make a uh, a bolster for a Bowie knife. This is the knife. I want to put a piece of brass in here as a guard. So what I did is I cut a piece of wood about the, the approximate shape of what I want this to be. I have angles in here called drafts. Since I'm going to do a sand casting of this, you can see the angle there. What I want to do is put this in what's called a cope and drag or flask. This is the flask. Top part being the cope, bottom part being the drag. We'll flip it over. We're going to drop it in. Then I want to start pounding sand in here. I'm going to use a wooden sprue. Actually, I'm just going to pond this in the way it is. We'll pond this in and then I'll show you what that looks like. So this type of this process is called uh, sand casting. So we're going to have our part. We're going to pound sand on it. We're going to pull it out in the uh, the, the the negative or exact. This this piece is actually going to be left open, and then I'm going to heat this brass up in the crucible. We'll pour the brass into the mold, and that uh, piece will become brass. What I want to do is I'm going to put a little powder on here. This is parting dust. You can use pull filterate if you want to. This is just to keep everything from sticking. And I'll start putting the sand in it. So here's the sand. This is um, a special mix. Very, very fine sand, clay, and oil. This is the stuff that I use when I'm trying to do some more detailed work. You can use regular uh, play sand if you want. What I like to do is screen it. You see a little chunk of something from my last pour is in here. Some metal. Probably some brass. We don't want that on our part. So at least the first piece, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to screen just, just to get enough of the sand covering the part. Once it's covered, then I don't care what, what uh, is on the outside of that. I'm not going to go ahead and sand. I'm not going to go ahead and uh, sift this whole piece. So there's enough sand covering the piece of wood. I'm just this is very compactable, and that's what we're trying to do here. That's a combination of the fineness of the sand and the oil. The oil actually adheres to the sand and sticks. And a good test of this is to actually crumple up a piece and you can break it off. If it just comes apart in your hands, it's not hard enough. Not solid enough, and you need to add more oil to it. So that's a good start. From here, I'm just going to dump. Start dumping my sand in. And again, I don't really care whether I have any pieces of metal left from the from the last pour, because it's not going to touch the metal. It's not going to touch the pattern. So I have this on a board to keep it everything nice and level. I'll start using some tools here to to ram this. You really can't get it hard enough. You want to, the whole idea is to pack this as tight as you can because you don't want the sand, you don't want things shifting, and you certainly don't want it to, uh, to fall whenever you turn it over. So there's the finished ram, at least on the bottom part. I've seen people hit them with hammers, I've seen them roll, I've seen them do all kinds of things, whatever you need to do. Basically whatever you want to do to make sure that this sand is in here. When I'm done I'll take a straight edge and just kind of screed off. any excess that I have. Once that part is done, we're actually going to take the pouring board and put this board on top. We're going to flip it over. Great. Get all the sand back in. So this now becomes the bottom of the mold. We'll go ahead and we'll put the cope on top of it. I have these color coded. That is not the right way. So now whenever I pull this top off, this is going to stay. I also have these in an angle. I cast these out of aluminum. If you can see the taper in there or not. It's not just a straight like the outside is. There's a, a bit of a keystone, so when you pull up on this, the force of the sand holding on itself is going to keep it in place. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a sprue, which is the 
where the molten metal is going to pour through and I basically it's just turned this down out of a piece of pine on the wood lathe and painted it so it's nice and shiny so nothing sticks to it. So this is where I'm going to pour this is where I'm going to pour my molten metal once everything is done. So again we're going to add some parting, parting dust to it. You should use a respirator so that you don't breathe any of this in. This will keep the surfaces from sticking together. And I'll go ahead and put some screen on here and I'll do the same thing. I'll put a coating of uh, the sand on it. I'm not going to be as particular on this side because there's just a little bit of facing. Really everything is kind of recessed right now. So I just need to put what's like a sixteenth inch or just an eighth of an inch. Just something on top of that just to cover it. And from there I'll just start ponding the sand back in. Right, so there's the first layer. I'll make sure it's nice and firm. We don't want any loose pieces. Then we just keep adding successful, successful layers. Successive layers. Pack them in. All right, so there's the finished pattern. All right, so there's the finished rammed cope and drag or flask. Just gonna pinch this in a little bit. I'll rotate this. I want that top to be a little more, a little bigger. What I'm trying to do is I want to make sure that none of the sand actually falls in whenever I'm doing my pour. Next thing I'm doing is I want to vent this, so I'll go down to about the depth of the top of the flask and I'll put holes in here. This is just a steel coat hanger. There are a lot of gases that are, are trapped in here. Gases tend to create vo bubbles, bubbles and create voids, and voids will put uh, porosity into your casting, which we don't want. So once this is done, Simple matter of just going ahead and going ahead. And. All right, so now this is done. I'm just going to lift this off, lift off the cope, set it to the side. So this is what's left. I'm going to go ahead and use one of my tools, and I'm going to clean this area out. Here I use all kind of, you can see the tools that I use. Pretty much whatever you have is, whatever you can work with is fine. Works just as fine. Again, the idea here is to push this all down so nothing, any sand that is loose here is going to go inside of your casting, which you don't want. That looks nice. Go ahead and find a screw and I'm going to go ahead and pull that top piece off. All right, you can see there I've taken a deck screw, screw gun screw. And if I did that right, that should just pull right out. A little bit of repair. So for this casting, what I'm trying to do, I've left a lot of room on here. I'm just going to tap all this down. There's a lot of machining room or, or grinding room because I know I'm going to have have to grind some of this out. And I'll just put the top on, and I'll sh start the uh, start the oven. We'll lower this piece on. Line those two pins up, and the flask is complete. Not that I need to, but just a little extra security. I'll go ahead and I'll take some binder clips. And I'll binder clip that together. Alright, so the next step, I'm going to go ahead and put this metal in the furnace. I don't think I'll be able to show too, too much of that. Because once that gets uh, hot, you don't really have too much time to pour. But if I don't show you that, I'll show you the end product, which is pouring. The metal will be poured in here. As soon as I can turn the camera on you, I mean, you'll see smoke and fire and everything coming out of here.